Well, I did. Right, I just want to say um, thank you all for coming again. We've, had, we've got people from Leeds, uh, from Liverpool and everywhere actually coming today to Manchester. Um, in um, November the 30th of March, um, Roger actually spoke on the Critical Mass Show. And uh, he talked about Lawford Bank, obviously. And since then, it's actually gained you know, way and people are sort of asking questions. And everyone's sort of interested to see, see what the next step is. We Are Change as a group is really proactive and that's what I'm hoping tonight everyone's going to be. It's not a case of listening anymore. I'm hoping that people will join the Lawful Bank and We Are Change instead of just talking. And that's what it's all about, is actually moving forward now. 2012 is a big, big year. Um, quick announcement on Norman Scarf. Uh, apparently the charges, just to check, have been dropped with the um, today on the, the, the megaphone and the leaflet drop, is that correct? Yeah. And the 23rd of February is going to be Manchester. Manchester again, so um, another sort of court hearing. So a bit of good news for now, mm. and we'll see where that takes us. So um, I think that's it. What we're going to do is let Roger speak, um, have a little break after Roger's said everything that he has to say. You can get yourself a little drink then, and then the questions after. What I would like from your guys is just to dip your hand in your pocket at the end, just to cover your expenses for Roger's come a long way, it took a lot of time out. Okay, guys? So, leave it at that. Roger Hayes, thank you very much. Right, well, welcome. Thank you for coming. Um, how many people in this room have heard of the British Constitution Group? Okay, so we've got some people who haven't. Um, obviously, the object of the exercise this year is to get to the point where the vast majority of in this room haven't heard of the British Constitution Group, but have heard about the Lawful Bank and are intrigued about what this is all about. Okay. Um, the British Constitution Group, I believe, are focused on solutions and not the problems. We've been talking years and years and years about the problems. We need to put that behind and get on with the solutions. Okay? The solution is our own banking system. So what I've done is I've actually constructed this presentation on the basis of what the Lawful Bank is and what it can do for each and every one of us. Okay? Now, at the end of the pres presentation, a lot of you will be saying that can't be true. Okay? But I promise you, it is true. So the object of exercise is to absorb as much as you can and then go on the internet and revisit, revisit until the penny drops. Because this is quite incredible. We are just duplicating what they do. And when we get it, I promise you, we just move ahead very, very quickly. And when in the context of this presentation, um, obviously we are also inviting you people to get involved. And I'm just going to put, put across at the end of what you can do and it couldn't be easier. This is the most important point about this whole business, right? It really is so easy, why aren't we doing it, okay? So my challenge to you is, stop talking about the problems, let's get on with the solutions that's in your hands. Well, let's, let's do an overview of where we're actually at now in the United Kingdom today. We live in a corporate fuel system, yeah? We think we're living in a, in a constitutional monarchy, we're not. It's been it's been suppressed. We now live in a corporate feudal system. A good demonstration of that. Any, anyone here um, know of Dave Murphy? His recent is on the. Okay, on the on the um, uh, video. Type in. I don't think it's actually under Dave Murphy, but he has uh, deregistered his vehicle. He's done all the right things. He carries his documents and so on and so forth. And he was stopped by the police just the other day. And he went through the whole process and did everything right. And the line in the sand was this. And the policeman who stopped him was a nice guy, a good copper, no problems. Polite, courteous, understanding, but then said, yeah, but I know all of that, but this is our system. Right? And there's the point. They have their system, we have our system. Our system is about freedom and democracy. Theirs is about control. And, and of course, ultimately, money. Right? And who's paying the policeman? We are indirectly, but they are directly. So the solution to the problem is to get to a position where we actually control the purse strings. If we can't control their purse strings, we'll control our own. So this is the process. All right, no more waffle. Let's get on with the basic detail. I'm going to read from a script because it makes my job a lot easier. Okay. All right, the Lawful Bank is a conduit by which members can gain access to towns. TAMS is the alternative monetary system. It is a database that keeps a record of the transactions 
and trades between those, and it's thus a record and proof of our trading work and our ownership of property. So it's a database, and we all know the power rests within the database. Who owns that property? It's in the database. How much are you worth? It's in the database. Who did you trade with? Can you prove that money's yours? It's in the database. It's a control thing, isn't it? So we need to get control of a database that we can use for our benefit. The banking system is a database which represents our, if you like, our value. Like what, how many digits we got actually represents how many digits we can, we can spend. So our lives are, are made more and more comfortable by, by virtue of the number of digits that are on a screen. And these guys control the digits, don't they? Right? So uh, the object exercise is, to, is to, to create an alternative system in which the digits are, are created for our benefit. Okay. So TAMS, the alternative monetary system. TAMS can facilitate trade by providing the necessary liquidity. We can create a low, low liquidity, and I'll explain that as we go through the process. In a modern day economy, money is an essential element for trade to flourish. If you push money out there, the economy grows. Yeah, that's what the banks do. They lend money willy-nilly willy and, and the economy grows. And then they pull it back and it, it, and it collapses again. So it's up and down, up and down according to the controls by the banks. The reason they do that is because every time it goes up and down, they benefit. They can cause our properties to double in price and, and groups of their friends are making a, a lot of money on the back of that. Mortgages are, are a classic example. So the actual money itself is, is a tool to actually create wealth. And through the banking system, if you've got some good friends in the right places, you make a lot of money and everyone wants to pay your bill. Yeah. Uh, wide, wide scale, but people say well, we should go back to bartering, we don't need money. This is an illusion, it's a silly idea. Of course we need money. It, money in the right hands is very, very useful and we shouldn't actually lose, lose sight of the fact that we're going back 10,000 years and we don't need money. We, of course we need money, it's a useful tool. Um, so, bartering is not a realistic option in a modern economy. TAMS is owned by its members and operated for the benefit. If everybody in this room joins TAMS, you, you uh, as a member get the benefit of TAMS. If you're outside TAMS, you don't get the benefit of it. You can actually keep using their system if you want to, and the best of luck to you. The managers who operate the system do so in accordance with the constitution agreed by the members. Managers are employed by a committee of 100. The committee of 100 is elected by the members. At the moment, we are constructing a committee of 100. We've got to start somewhere. If anybody wants to make a contribution in that regard, in Manchester area, we are inviting people to, to actually put their names forward, step forward. If you want to get involved, if you want to make a difference, let me know and we'll put you on the committee. Um, the actual management group itself, um, the committee of 100 will actually employ and decide who will manage actual the, the town's network. Okay. TAMS will be operated in the court of the Constitution. I will be applying for the job of operating TAMS, yeah? Because I think I've done a good job so far, I think I understand it, and, but I will only do it on the basis that I'm elected to do so, okay? So this business is about from the bottom up to the top, okay? Um, TAMS is a private club. Anybody who wants to join is free to do so without restriction. The philosophy, I believe, is a bank is a right, it is not a privilege. Okay, we need a bank to actually live our lives. If you don't have a bank account, you're stuck. If you go and stay in a hotel, they say, can we have your car, please? They don't have a car, well, you can't stay in this hotel. You try and get on an airline without a credit card, you can't do it. You can't live a normal life without a bank account. Right? So I believe a bank account is a right, it's not a privilege. The banks treat it as a privilege. That's how they play with it. No, you can't have a bank account, because we say so. Right? So anybody has a right to a bank account, and TAMS is that basic facility that if you want to be a member, you can be a member. It's conditional upon the constitutional provisions agreed collectively. Yeah? Chief of, amongst which is that you have to accept the common law jurisdiction. Because it's common law that has protected our interests for so long, and it's common law that has been oppressed now, and we now have statute law, or government law, or control law. Statutes are control tools. Common law protects our rights, statutes are a means of control. The aim is to create our own liquidity, money, and issue same to our members for our benefit. And through a true democratic process to engineer the supremacy of our liquidity over the banker's liquidity. 
So we're going into competition with the bankers. It's the people versus the bankers. There's more of us than there are of them. So why are we all slaves? Because we haven't got off our back shots and done anything about it. Possibly because we haven't had the mechanism. Now we've got the mechanism. It couldn't be simpler. Follow the theme, and at the end of today, hopefully, at the end of this evening, hopefully, we'll have a number of branches set up and we move forward from there. This is a process that will take place as we garner support from a growing number of people waking up to the oppression under which they are currently living. We're all awake, that's why we're here. How many people in this room have got friends and families who think they're mad? <laughs> Boy, it's consistent. You're mad, you know, conspiracy theories, you know. And our response is, sleepyhead, wake up. And they're waking up, you know, we are the sharp pencils in the box. We know we're right because we study it. Somebody said to me, 9-11, Roger, you're a conspiracy theorist. I said, oh, you're an expert on it, are you? Well, have you ever read anything about it? No. Right, I've read tons of this stuff and I know what I'm talking about. How about you read this book? A friend of mine, he actually came for Christmas, took a book about 9-11 home, he's, he's still got it actually. And after he read it, I said, well, he said, yeah. He said, it's compelling, isn't it? Yeah. He said, so I said, it was 9-11 inside Jefferson. He said, well. So these people study it, they wake up, don't they? Um, they can't stay asleep too long because it's going to hit them, right? And we got the problem of people driving around with nice cars and nice houses and their families and, you know, they don't see the problem, but, you know, we're, we've been exposed one way or the other, and we realize what's coming down. They'll get it sooner or later. All right, what is money? It's a means of account, it's a means of exchange, and it's a means of storing value. So a means of account, I, if I want to exchange something, I don't want to go with my logs up to the, to the farm with his pigs and, and, and exchange them. So what I do is I create a, 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 an IOU. I write on it, IOU, whatever, and hand it to him. So this, this is money. I can create money, and IOU is money. It's a means of account, a means of actually organizing a trade between us. Sorry, I'm, I'm actually jumping on it. It's a means of exchange. The means of account is this. If I've got a pig, and if I've got a cow, and if I've got a shed, and if I've got a tractor, and a whole pile of different things, I need to be able to write them down as my asset value. So I convert them all into pounds sterling. I say, that's worth this amount, that's worth that amount. I can all add it up and I actually tally it up and give an amount in pounds, so it's a means of account. So rather than have a book full of all the stuff I own, right, and, and when someone says, what are you worth? I say, a oh, pig, chicken, a cow, a hen, <laughs> The guy says, well, just give it to me in pounds. So that's where it's a means of account. Means of exchange is the, the IOU, the means of giving a piece of paper, I'm obliged to actually honor that IOU when you bring it back to me. And a means of storing value. If I have chickens and they lay eggs, the commodity is eggs, I can keep those eggs for six months or three months, whatever the period is, after which they're useless, okay? So what I do is I take the eggs and I sell them for IOUs, which I put in my, my safe, and they can be there for 10 years. They store my value, okay? So that's what money is all about. Money is not actually worth anything. It's a piece of paper, it's only worth pennies. But a lot of people have come to believe it's worth money, it's worth something, it's not. It's a representation of value, and if we understand the difference, we're starting to get the gist of it. Right, money is what people are prepared to accept to represent value. So if I take 20 quid out of my pocket, I can go to the barman and hand that over, no problem. He knows that will be honored when he hands it to the next person and so on and so forth. So if we create a means of exchange that other people will accept from us, for whatever reason, then we've got money. Okay, and we can do that, and it's, it's done. Uh, vouchers, uh, you've got American Express had their own money, didn't they? Have the, the American Express vouchers used to go around the world. So we can create money. What we've got to do is we've got to find a mechanism by which that money that we create, the people's money, will be accepted universally. And the first people who've got to do that is ourselves. Okay? So I'm going to give you some money tonight in exchange for your bag, and you're going to take, take it from me, aren't you? On the basis only that you can exchange it somewhere else. Yeah, and that's the trick, is getting it to, to, to be able to exchange. Um, if you choose a gold-backed currency, now this is the big, oh, we should back currency with gold and silver, right? No, we should not, because if you choose a gold-backed currency, you put yourself under the control of the people with all gold and silver, right? And who's got that? Same people who got all the bloody money. So don't fall into that, it's a bad idea. 
If we choose a fiat currency, there's nothing wrong with fiat currencies, right? We are controlled by the issuers of that country, and that's the issue at the moment. The people are churning out pounds sterling at the moment, which is obviously the banks themselves, not the government. They are in control of, of, of the, the currency, therefore they're in control of us. If we create our own currency, we, we therefore control our own lives. Our currency is backed by our pledge, which is sound thinking. The pledge, um, the undervaluing of TAMS, which is the alternative monetary system, derives from the pledges given by each member on joining. Um, this is a promise to pay 100. So you sign a pledge. When you join the, 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 the lawful bank, what will happen eventually is you will sign a pledge for 100 pounds. If we get a million members, that's worth 100 million pounds. That's more than the banks have, right? In terms of, the, of, of their money, they don't have the backing of the people. And ultimately, it's our ability to stand by our own money that will give us the credibility and give us its value. So that's part of the process. This is not a request for £100. We're not asking anybody to give us any money. That's the other beauty about the lawful bank. It stands on its own merit. We don't want any money. There's no money required. We create our own money. We create. But the pledge is, is to give ourselves the knowledge that we're prepared to back our own currency. Okay? It's a statement of our, our support of our own system. It's a self-bonding provision. It's our guarantee. If we're not prepared to guarantee our own money, then we deserve to be slaves. Anybody can make their own money. It's a statement of fact. It's not complicated because money is an IOU. It's as simple as that. The key point is honoring it. Yeah? And in today's society, everyone's on a bit of a... Not everyone. I apologize for that. Um, a lot of people are on a bit of a you know, take and they just want, 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 want. We, we've got to make a commitment in this, this, uh, as this changeover happens. So um, we've got to be able to prepare to guarantee uh, uh, what we say. That's the basis of common law, isn't it? Um, there is a law of copyright making it illegal to copy anybody else's money. So if I took a £20 note and tried to print those and use those, it's illegal. But fair enough. You know, that's, it's their system, it's their money. I can't do that. Um, and of course, if we're also using someone else's money, there are conditions attached. We're entering into their system. That's the whole control mechanism. Likewise, if we have our own money, we would have terms and conditions attached to the use of that money. TAMS will create its own liquidity and distribute this, this in accordance with the constitutional principle. Equality being an important part of those principles. We all deserve the right opportunity. Now, if we, if we create money and we divvy it out amongst ourselves, some people are going to go mad and, and spoil it for themselves. That's their choice. Others are going to invest wisely. At the moment, <coughs> unfortunately, the way the system works is some people get the benefits that some people get, get you know, become wealthy and, and millionaires overnight because they're fed, you know, they, they, they got a hand in and, and so on and so forth. I believe that we all have the right, we should have the right opportunity and, and equal opportunity to, to, to make good of ourselves, right? Um, there is presently only one monetary system, and this is important. This, this is the monopoly. There's only one monetary system in the world. Um, its existence allows for the flow of commerce both nationally and internationally. We need a monetary system because that's how commerce happens, that's how trade happens. Yeah. A second system will provide competition to the monopoly and provide an alternative means by which trade can flow. So we will be able to provide an alternative system by which we can actually trade with people. That's the, that's the key point about the second monetary system. But our monetary system will not and cannot link with theirs. You have a choice. Use theirs or use ours. The second system will provide proof that the existing system is corrupt. Because what we'll be saying to people is, we can provide you with an interest-free mortgage. And people say, well, how can you do that? And we'll explain. And they say, well, that makes sense. But why don't they do that? The reason they don't do it is because they're doing it for their benefit, whereas our system is for our benefit. So we can create a system whereby we can give you money to buy a house, conditional upon you paying it back over the next odd years. Now, because it's for us, our benefit, okay, you will be buying, what you're effectively doing is you're actually buying today on the basis of your work over the next 20 years, 25 years, 30 years, okay? So you have an obligation to, to meet the, the, the promise that you are making, right, to pay back the money that you borrow. But the key is, there's no interest. So a mortgage of 250,000 pounds that you would pay over the next 25 years is, is, is easy, it's not, it's not a big problem. But if you have interest on top of that, 
you pay one and a half or two times the value of that. So it's half a million. That's why we're on a treadmill. Because more money is being paid on the interest than on the principal itself. So we'd all be able to buy our own homes. We'd all be able to have a comfortable life. We'd all be able to work four day week because we wouldn't be feeding the greed of the bankers, okay? So the alternative money system provides a mortgage. We can all have a mortgage interest-free, but we would have to pay a fee. I named the figure of 10% fee up front, and the reason that we need a fee is because we need a banking system. We need networks of branches to actually offer the services, the facilities that we're going to need to actually have a bank, and therefore we have to pay for staff, we have to pay for overhead. So if you borrow £250,000, you'll be required to find £25,000 as a deposit up front before you get your mortgage. So there's an incentive to save there, okay? There's an incentive to, to, to do the right thing, but also through the saving process, you are demonstrating that you will actually be able to pay the £250,000 over the next however many years. So there's a safety mechanism built in. It's not different to the system they operate, they, they still have securities based on, they still ask the question, can you afford to pay, which they should do. Okay, as we know, because of the grief factor, they didn't do that recently. That's what the, the whole whole mortgage crisis is about, people unable to pay. Lend, 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 lend. Money, 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 money. Interest, interest. Greed, fed, the disaster. Okay, so the system actually provides for interest-free mortgage. If you've got a business, you can buy, borrow interest-free money for your business. And you can pay it back over five years, or ten years, or twenty years. It actually doesn't matter. What matters is you pay it back. So the, the idea is to create the money, give you the money, get you to pay it back at a reasonable pace so you're not straining yourself, putting your family at risk, and, and putting your health at risk. But you must pay it back. Okay. Again, the principle is a fee, so that the, the, the fee goes towards the banking system, the, the branches, and that pays for people's wage and overhead and keeps the thing working in a normal commercial way. A monopoly monetary system has allowed its owners to own and control governments through control of political parties, news media, and resources. Hands up if you agree with that statement. They control them, don't they? They control the politicians. The politicians don't control the banks. The bankers are controlling the politicians. And if we don't know that, we've not been doing our homework. Okay? So what happens is they fund the... the um, political parties, and the political parties make um, uh, regulations and rules that, that satisfy the banks. Now here's an interesting point. We know, we mostly um, understand the, the, the scenario that, that the government could create money debt-free and use that money for our benefit. They don't do so. Why don't they do so? And the reason is because the politicians won't benefit financially if they made a decision that benefited all of us. But how many politicians, when they leave, leave office, get jobs by the banks. All of them are lost. Yes, yeah, a lot. Of them. Yeah. So many of them. And I'd, I'd like to put a great deal of money that they've all got off your bank account somewhere. <laughs> so they're, they're bored, aren't they? They've been bored. And certainly significant. They're, you know, I look at, oh yes, so there's laws of bank, Tony Blair, bank, Gordon Brown, bank. They're all employed at the bank. And what it is, it's a delayed backhander. It's subtle, but it's still corruption. Yeah. It's through a network of private central banks that the nations of the world are kept under the thumb of the cartel through debt. Every single European nation is in debt. And apparently we owe a trillion quid. You know, we, we used to have this empire. We had all this trade and commerce going back, you know, centuries. Where's the bloody money gone? Where's all this money? Why do we owe a trillion quid? Right? Because the money was created out of nothing by the bankers who lent it to our government where they didn't have to borrow it from the bankers, and the interest had racketed up and up and up and up and up. And we're paying the interest on borrowed money that didn't have to be borrowed in the first place. And meanwhile, all the way through the centuries, behind the scenes, the politicians have been getting backhander after backhander after backhander. So we need to take back control of the production of money. Now, Who's heard of positive money at the moment? There's a, there's a, okay, now positive money, they've got all the right bits in place, they understand it, they're explaining it and everything else, but their solution is to hand control back to a committee of bankers. <laughs> got it wrong. We hand the control to the people. The mechanism we put in place 
is to hand the control of the creation of money back to the people through a network of small local branches. We control it from the bottom and control it all the way to the top. An alternative money system would destroy the control of the banking cartel and eliminate the debts of every nation on the planet. That's the potential of what we're doing. It will remove poverty, not just in this country, around the world. We've got to show an example here. If we do it here, we'll do it everywhere. We've got links with Ireland, and we're talking about the Lawful Bank of Ireland, the Lawful Bank of Canada, the Lawful Bank of Australia, the Lawful Bank of the USA. Okay? And so the concept is that those lawful banks will be able to link with each other around the world, so we're creating an international system. It's early days yet, but I can promise you we're getting some really fascinating feedback from them around the world. We've got the mechanism right, we just need to push it forward now. And of course, this is what Kennedy was trying to do. Kennedy was trying to remove the debt of his nation. He could see what was going on. America now is so, so indebted, it, it can't even pay the interest on its debt. America is bankrupt. It's incredible that, that, that the American people 70% of who don't have a passport, maybe that's half the problem, um, are so massively in debt that they will never, ever, ever, ever repay it. Because the US dollar is going to collapse at some point in time. Uh, the planning of one world government, and that one, sorry, the planning of one world currency, talking about it all the time, and that, of course, will be backed by gold. That's, what, that's the object of the exercise. All right, so um, Kennedy had the right idea, and of course he was assassinated, same as Lincoln. Who assassinated Kennedy? Wasn't the KGB? It's the bankers. Right. As mind-boggling and as unbelievable as it seems, it really is as simple as this. Right? By simply creating an alternative money system, world debts could expire. If they would expire, what would happen? The world would change overnight, wouldn't it? It just is so easy a solution, it requires that we get off our charts and make it happen. An alternative monetary system in order to function requires a critical mass of people. That's what we require. Hopefully everyone here join the Lawful Bank and go out and talk to your friends that we're building up a critical mass at the moment. Every day we get a number of people who sign up to the Lawful Bank. It's not going to go back. It's not going to go away. It's going to grow. It's going to grow. And it's going to grow. The question is how long will it take? We don't know. <coughs> right, the critical mass is not a specific number. Okay, people say, how many is it? Well, it's not an actual number. If we all arrived on an island and there was, say, $500, and within the island of sheep and cows and wood and so on and so forth, and we were able to create a community around all the resources on the island, right? the critical mass is the number of people you need to actually utilize the resource to be benefited. So it could be 500 people. But in a country this size, the critical mass, because we're competing, is going to be larger. So it's about getting the resources. Everybody is a resource in one way or another. If you can answer a phone, you're a resource. If you can cut timber, you're a resource. If you can teach, you're a resource. If you can drive a train, you're a resource. If you can do anything or something, you're a resource. Okay? So, if you sit on your fat shop all day and do nothing, you are a resource user. And you're a liability. Yeah. <laughs> I know we all like to, but, but the bottom line is a lot of people are being encouraged because they can't get jobs. It's a nonsense. They're a resource that can actually create and be used, and it's not being used. That's quite deliberate. It's a control mechanism. Yeah. So everybody, and I know for a fact, I know a lot of people say, oh, there's lazy, you know, feckless lazy people. Yeah, there's lazy. Most people actually enjoy going out and working in a job they enjoy. It's part of life, it's part of society. And most of the lazy things just, just are you know, depressed because they, don't feel, they feel useless. Right? And, and if we actually took these people by the, by the collars and gave them something they could do and wanted to do, we could convert them into resource to make a contribution to society. And that's what wealth is really all about, isn't it? Uh, wealth is our ability to get up in the morning, go and do a nice job with people we enjoy working with, a bit, bit uh, fanciful, but you know, it, it can be improved upon. And work four days, not seven, Here's a theory I have. If you have a business and you spend five pounds to get two back, bad business, yeah? So why are we working five days to get two back? Doesn't make sense to me. Yeah. Right. So, so we need to reevaluate wealth. Wealth is being able to spend time with your children. 
Wealth is having a nice car. Wealth is having a nice house. But wealth is not a billion digits on a screen, is it? What are you going to do with a billion digits on a screen? It's complete nonsense. But that's the mentality. I would like a billion digits. One thing I want to be is I want to be a millionaire. I want to be a digitaire. Right. No, you don't. You want, you want to enjoy your life, for crying out loud. We're not here for this very long. So, so we need to re-establish, re refocus on what wealth is really all about. Wealth is having a nice glass of red wine in a pub in the evening with people you enjoy. So let, let, let's start to refocus on what wealth is all about. Of course, a fair and just society will, however, always look after and provide for those amongst us who are generally not able to make a contribution. That goes without saying, doesn't it? Okay. But the local communities must judge who that is or who they are. So if people can't genuinely help out, the local communities will know they're genuine. You know, so all these many, many queues of people who've got you know, illnesses and work hard work, you know, local communities can sort that out. The ultimate expression of people power is in their ability to coordinate that action to achieve a commonly desired objective. And we are crap at that, aren't we? Right? <laughs> you know, we all think we should do this. We'd all agree with that. Can we coordinate our action to do so? No. Because, you know, it doesn't matter what it is that the people coordination were too busy at work, we're too busy doing that, we're too busy now in parking, paying parking fires and so on and so forth. So our ability to coordinate to get what we want has been destroyed because of the mechanism. Right? We're on this bloody treadmill and our opportunity to make change is not, is not as easy as we'd like it to be. So that is the ultimate expression of people power is in our ability to coordinate our actions to achieve a commonly desired objective. The lawful back urges every member to act in unison on key objectives. That's, the, that's the, the essence of the lawful back, is to bring people together through our own monetary system to make a decision, universal decision, that will make the change. Okay? And it will be something that we all agree on. Hang Tony Blair, hands up. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> It's through these actions that we can affect the control of the controllers. Okay? It's been by being able to actually create change that we want through a mechanism that's easy to use. So this true democracy at work, isn't it? If the critical mass will not act in unison, then the elite who do so, because they all act together, don't they? They've got a mechanism, they have got their bank and their mechanism to pay that bunch of guys to do as they're told and they control us. That they have got the mechanism and they act in a united fashion. And if we don't start acting together, they will continue to control us and oppress us for their collective benefit. We are masters of our own destiny if we only woke up and realized it. You know, because the one thing I say is we want change, we make change. Right, when you sign up to Lawful Bank, we ask three things. We ask you to sign a pledge for £100 sterling. As I mentioned, it's not asking for money, it's just making the pledge. So the underlying value. To agree to the jurisdiction of our common law courts. Um, when you agree to the jurisdiction of our common law courts, it's one step from legislation. Yeah? A legislator is, is obviously the, the, the means of control by which you know, we move forward. A society needs rules and regulations for stability. So, you know, the free man movement is about, I don't have to uh, uh, obey that statute, which is right, and I, you know, oppose the statute legislation because it's used to oppress us, the bottom line is, to, for an ease and, and well-controlled society, we need rules and regulations, we do need some legislation. So, we've also got to present this to people out there who, 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 who think we're all mad, that we have got a reasoned approach to everything, yeah? And that includes legislation. No, we don't want to, we don't want to drop legislation. We just want to readdress legislation that's being used to oppress us and replace it that's working for our benefit. Here's the point. Common law is there to protect us. Statutes are there to control us. Yeah, there's a difference you should remember. So common law <laughs> protects our rights, our liberties, our freedoms, our properties. Statute law is you can't park there, you can't do that, you can't do the other. So the difference between the two. The statute law has become oppressive in the extreme, and now they're using statute law to oppress common law. It's a, it's a power grab. They are oppressing us by taking away our common law rights. And that's what happened to David Murphy. David Murphy said, I have a common law right to do this. And the policeman said, I don't care. But you should care, that's your job. You're not paying me. 
yes, but these are my rights. I don't care about your rights. Your rights don't feed my kids and pay for my mortgage. I'm just going to do what I'm told by my boss because he's paying me. So shut up and get the police car. That's what we're dealing with, okay? So all those police, these policemen are very nice guys, most of them, but the vast majority, not all of them, some are nasty pieces of work, and I know because I've, I've, I've come across them, okay? Yeah. And one guy arrested me, so I'm taking away your liberty. And I said, why are you so angry? He said, I'm not angry! <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, we need the police on our side. So we've just got to educate them. We've got to be patient. They are coming on side. They're starting to realize the free man movement, so we say. How many people have seen the, um, the email that's going around, the uh, Justice Clark telling the courts how to deal with free men in the court? How many people have seen that email? Okay, it's quite yeah, hilarious, it's, really. A um, couple of things missing in that. They didn't actually explain what the free man movement was all about, because they don't understand, they don't actually get it. But also, the emphasis was on how we must behave in their courts. Yeah. And I, I keep reminding you, these aren't your courts, these are our courts. It's about, you know, you're supposed to be following some protocol on how to deal with us for our benefit, not your benefit. So they got it wrong. I'm, I'm in the middle of writing a letter back to this gentleman, Stephen James. All right, well, in parallel with bi building the lawful back membership, we will be creating an alternative land registry. Okay? So what we're doing is we're duplicating everything they've done we're doing our own. It's alternative governance. It's a process. It doesn't happen overnight. Uh, we get there and say this. We also are looking at alternative peace officers. I've used the word force. I kept sort of moving it out and putting it in. I said, but, you know, at some point in time, we're going to stand up with these people and say no, politely. So, you know, I'm not suggesting the last thing we need is violence. The last thing we need. But a little bit of assertion is a very powerful. I, I find I can be quite assertive sometimes. And I say to people, no, I'm not going to do that, and no offence to you, but you have no right to tell me what to do. Nobody on this planet has any right to tell me what to do without my consent. And we should all understand that. We should all know that each and every one of us is our own sovereign. We have our rights, and nobody, and I mean nobody, has a right to tell you what to do without your consent. And dear Mr. Policeman, as nice as you are, you need to know that also. It's a fundamental fact. It's a common law right. And nobody can convert my right into a privilege that they can take away. Okay. We also want to create our own alternative bailiffs. So a bailiff knocking on my door, trying to collect parking fines from this local council or any other local council, he's going to be breaking my common law rights. And I will be giving him a summons to appear in my court. And if he doesn't attend, we will have bailiffs knocking on his door. Yeah. <laughs> we will have our own common law courts. And we'll have our own judiciary. Again, it's not going to happen. No, that's a process. We invite good judges, and there are good judges out there, to actually join us. Because when our money system is working and theirs is dead, Right, they're going to need jobs, aren't they? They can come and work for us. <laughs> Every individual who we employ in the service of the people as a peace officer, bail, a court clerk, judge, and jury will be paid from our own pool of funds, created for not. Okay, that's where we're going. We will only recognise those mortgages issued through our monetary system and lodged with our land registry. So you've then got a competition, haven't you? They're saying, We've got a mortgage on this land, and we say, well, it doesn't, it doesn't sit on our registry, so I'm sorry we don't agree with you. Well, we'll take you to court. Well, we'll see you in our court. Okay? This is the power of people again. No, I'm not going to your court. We know your courts are corrupt. It's full of corrupt people, and we've got the evidence. Right? So we will see you in our court, where we've got juries, where 12 men and women true will act in the best interest of all of us. Not just some stitching up judge who's prepared to do it because he gets a backhand every Friday afternoon, okay? And we will not recognize mortgages that carry interest because they are deemed unlawful, because they are criminal. They're mathematically impossible, so they're actually fraudulent. And we can prove that. We can prove mathematically that interest on mortgages <coughs> is impossible to pay. Right. Lawful Bank, you were provided with two separate accounts. A property account and a current account. So there is two separate accounts. Uh, we will adopt the fractional reserve banking system. Now, 
people have said to me, oh, fractional reserve, oh, you can't, that's, that's, that's the problem. No, that's, fractional reserve is actually good. It's very good in our hands. It's good, it's a benefit for us. The problem with fractional reserve is when it's used for the benefit of somebody else and there's interest attached to it. Okay, so fractional reserve banking, there's nothing wrong with fractional reserve banking. For a transition period, as our system takes control of theirs, for every one pound sterling brought in, we will create ten times this amount in each member's current account. So, for example, if we've got branches all over the UK, and by the end of this year we have thousands, okay, you'll be able to deposit one pound into your account, and we will give you credit of ten pounds, and you will be able to spend ten pounds, right? And the, the thing is with the banks at the moment, if you go and put one pound in Halifax, they using fractional reserve banking will create £10 and they will then let out. That's the way the system works. So they take control of that credit, don't they? And then they earn interest on that credit. Mm -hmm. What we do is we do exactly the same as they do. So it works, doesn't it? They've been doing it for a long time. So we do the same. But this time, we don't let the banks control the credit. We give it to ourselves. And we spend that money into circulation. And what happens is that benefits circulation because as the money goes from us to somebody else, it will go to someone else and it creates liquidity. And that's where the trade all comes from, that's where the benefit comes from. So one pound in creates ten pound. Um, a hundred pound creates a thousand pound. We're calling them sovereignty pounds. You know, the emphasis is on sovereignty, people's power, as it were. Money that you create into the account, into your um, current account, can be transferred to your property. Account. I'll explain you know, that this one's got probably de a lot of detail there that you won't gather, but it hopefully you'll start to stop in place. Right, the fractional reserve system provides this. If you actually bring up to £10,000 into the lawful bank, it will create a liquidity of £100,000 for you to spend. Yeah? Um, after your first £10,000, it will reduce to um, 9 to 1, 8 to 1, all the way down to, to on your, your 10 to £10,000, 1 to 1 on par. So £100,000 cash that you bring over to our system, we will create liquidity of £550,000. How many people have got £100,000? <laughs> exactly. Right. So, after the first £100,000, I'll explain the situation. The fractional reserve ratio is fixed at par of 1 to 1. But those without £100,000 in their bank, um, they can actually trade the privileged position. So the mere fact that you don't have £100,000 and I don't have £100,000, I might be able to rustle a, a couple hundred quid and transfer that over, and that will do me a benefit. But that's where we'll start. But there are a lot of wealthy people who do have this sort of money, yeah, and they will be able to bring the money over. And we need them. We need their money. We need their money to actually create the interface between our system and their system. Yeah. So what's going to happen is slowly but surely, they're going to realize that they're going to need to bring their money over to our system. Once they've brought over their first £100,000, their second £100,000, they can actually find somebody who doesn't have £100,000 and give them some money and share the, the proceeds. Does that make sense? So they can actually bring the second £100,000 over at 10 to 1, on your on, on the back of your privilege, you've still got your ten to one ratio, yeah. So you will bring it over and hand some of it back to them. So you're actually able to, to benefit them. So they bring one hundred thousand pounds over and they get they get a ratio of ten to one. Or they get a ratio of ten to one, nine to one for the first hundred thousand pounds. So they get five hundred and fifty thousand pounds into our bank account. For their next lot of money they bring over, they're getting a ratio of one to one. So there's no, there's no benefit there. But if they find somebody who has not used their fractional reserve ratio, they can give them the money and these people can bring it over. If, it's, if the penny's not dropped, you know, to say this, this, sometimes it takes time. Right. So 100,000 has liquidity value of half a million, five, 50,000. So 100,000 pounds has a liquidity value of 550,000 pounds in the lawful bank. For the second £100,000, it, it only has £100,000. So it's, it's transferred at par. So if, I'm, if I've got a second £100,000 and you're skint, I'm going to say to you, here's my money, will you bring it into lawful bank at the ratio of whatever, and you'll say yeah, and I will then say to you, and I'll split with you. You're now wealthier than you were, 
and I have benefited on the back of your ratio. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. The fractional reserve provision will be progressively reduced to par as more and more people join our system. So first in is first serve. So what happens is the first million people that come over will get the benefit of the, 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 the fractional reserve system that will give them 550,000 pounds. Yeah, they get the benefit of that. But for the second million, it has to reduce. So the situation is that if we're getting all this liquidity in the marketplace, we would start having an impact on prices if there was 10 million of us. But 1 million against 60 million, we won't make an impact. So as more and more people join our system, we will have to start reducing the fractional reserve element so we're not distorting the market and causing inflation. So it's a control mechanism as well. Okay. So those sharp pencils in the box who signed up to the Lawful Bank and who start using the system will benefit. And when people start to see you benefiting, how did you buy that new car? Well, I got an interest-free loan from the Lawful Bank. How did you get that? Well, have you signed up? Well, you better bloody be quick because there's still benefits available. It's designed deliberately to persuade people to get their into gear, okay? It's designed to motivate people. I think we should all understand this. There is absolutely nothing wrong with creating money out of nothing, provided it is repaid regardless of the time it's taken. So if you're a wealthy person, you could probably pay a quarter million pounds back in 15 years. But if you're less wealthy, it might take you 40 years. So be it. It doesn't matter. So the actual length of time that you pay back the loan should be geared to your income. Right, so you're not disadvantaged. And the bottom line is, as long as you pay it back, that's the criteria. We will apply a transaction charge of 0.25% on all transactions. It is through these transactions that charges that the money is repaid to the system and then cancel to avoid an ever-increasing money supply. Now, this is an important point, okay? Um, if somebody gave you a quarter million quid, and you repaid it back over a period of time, um, there is a cost involved. 0.25% will cover that cost. If I gave you free money, for example, if I gave you £10,000 for your benefit, and then you spent that £10,000, and it went round the circuit, and every time it was transferred, 0.25 was paid, eventually the capital sum would be repaid, wouldn't it? So there's two ways in which money can be actually repaid. It could be repaid directly by the borrower, or it can be put into circulation and transferred around the system, and every time it transfers, somebody who gets use of it pays a little bit, and it passes it on, pays a little bit, and by the time it's gone round 400 times, it's repaid itself. So everybody is getting use of the, of the liquidity in the system and everybody is paying it back. Now that's a lot cheaper than paying interest on it. Because every time a thousand pound goes around, a little bit goes to the bank, this way what's happening is everybody is actually contributing to the existence of the liquidity in the system without causing inflation. So what's the transaction charge worth? A ten pound is two and a half pence. Um, 100 pounds is 25 pence, and 1,000 pounds is 2 pounds 50. So this is, the, this is the cost of keeping the system afloat, and this replaces interest, and it's a lot cheaper. Let's not be stupid here. It does cost money to run a banking system, and we've all got to pay. The point is we are all paying for the collective benefit, so as the money goes around, everyone is getting use of the money as it goes around, is paying a little bit. That's the way the system works. Right, so by the time any fixed amount of money has transferred 400 times, the full amount is repaid for the transaction charges. The reason is that there are 400 or 0.25 in 100, aren't there? So everyone pays 0.25%. There are 400 0.25%. So once that thousand pounds has gone around the circuit 400 times, the thousand pounds is repaid, right? So this is not free money that, that's circulating around. It is much less experiment, but it's a cheap money, it's easy money. Isn't it? So money created nothing is therefore not free money, and this is the mistake people want. How can you create free money? This is the thing people can't get. Well, actually, it's not free money, 
it's being paid for by the users progressively over the transfer of that money around the around, uh, uh, commerce. So it's being paid for by its users. Right. We mentioned your property account. We will transfer into your property account £250,000. Yeah? Now that is designed to pay off your mortgage or to buy a new home. Well, we can do that and explain exactly what happens. There are restrictions. We can't have a free-for-all. So there's, a, there's an easing of the £250,000 to every single member of, of, of the, the lawful bank. Um, I'm not going to sit down and talk about the complications of issuing money to everybody. There has to be a control, and I'll give you an example, right? If we gave everybody a quarter of a million pounds and the homeowners agreed to sell for our money, what would happen is prices would just go through the roof, wouldn't they? But if we use a quarter of a million pounds to buy new homes that were just built, the prices of property would go down, yeah? So there's a logic in releasing money, and this is the whole stupidity of this thing, that, that mortgages could be created by the government and be given to, to, to um, young families to buy a new home and paid for over 50, period, 50 years without any effect whatsoever. And if they went for new homes, what would happen? It would bring the price of properties down. What would then happen is people who are renting houses would move out of rented houses and move into their own houses. And because people couldn't rent houses, those would drop in price as well. And the next thing is they would be sold. They would be put on the market. So empty homes would then be occupied by people who could buy them. So the whole nature of buy to rent would be disappearing because people could afford to buy their own homes. Yeah? So we can change the nature of the property market. Oh, I, I own a couple of flats and we rent them out, so I'd be a loser here. But hell, I'm prepared to do that. Because ultimately, all the additional benefits of the lawful bank are, are there. I don't need to rent out a property. So I would like to see a situation where every single family, every single you know, man, woman and child on this planet had their own home. And we can do that by creating our own liquidity. Right, so every individual in receipt of £250,000 will pay a tax of £833 each month. A tax. Right, that should be a payment of, of, of £833 a month. Deducted from the property account, thus repaying the same over a 25-year period. Yeah, that's the way it works out. If you pay £833 each month over 25 years, you will pay off £250,000. Right. This can be enforced by our courts, um, the juris jurisdiction of which is conceded to, to, uh, by, voluntarily by members of the fund to off. Um, the asterisk is that can be extended, it could be 30 years, it could be 35 years, it could be 40 years, okay? Now, this is an important point. This is why you've got two accounts. You've got a property account from which you have to pay £833.33. Money can be transferred from a member's current account to the property account. Right. Fractional reserve banking allows you to create 10 times more money than deposit. So £833 can be created from £83. Get it? So what is happening is this. You're actually able to buy a property for a tenth of its value. So we're actually starting to depress the real property prices without actually affecting the overall value. So what's happening is the wealth is transferring from the existing system to you. That's what's actually happening. Right? So we're creating wealth. We're matching that wealth with an asset, a property asset, a real property asset. And as a direct consequence, what's happening is that the wealth that is transferring from the banking system to us. That's what the mechanism does. I know your, your, your heads are probably getting a bit hot now. Yeah. Right, depending, uh, a time of the wish of the majority and by people <coughs> vote, the amount that wealthy people can transfer may be capped. Now, I don't, I don't want to go around penalising wealthy people. A lot of people have worked down hard, and, and I, don't, I don't think that somebody who's got 60 million pounds in, in the bank is a bad guy. And I have no issues about trying to control anybody's life. The way that the lawful bank is structured is everybody is a beneficiary. But a billionaire, oh, I got this. <laughs> I just don't get that. So anyway, the majority decides, and through consensus, we will, if necessary, decide that nobody should have more than a billion. I mean, so so that's as I say, it's something that, that people would like to discuss in, in, in 
and they're quite comfortable of, of, of themselves and decide whether or not we should cap wealthy people. I, I'm inclined to say no, I think we should encourage everyone to come over and we can address the balance, you know, after we're in control again, yeah? So the property account will provide new liquidity with which to pay off an existing mortgage or buy a new built home, <coughs> to a home for the existing pool of houses. So I've just explained all of that to you. Yeah. Um, the lawful bank will set up escrow accounts for all high street banks. You can use the new liquidity in your lawful bank account to pay a, a, any outstanding mortgage. So if you've got a bank, um, if you've got a mortgage with a Halifax or Barclays or whoever, and it's £100,000, yeah, you can use your quarter of a million pounds and you can pay them back. And what will happen is you will go online and you will type in, please pay Halifax £100,000. So it will come out of your bank account, so your quarter of a million pounds will drop to £150,000 and it will go over to Halifax Bank and we will inform Halifax that you just paid your mortgage. And they're going to say, hang on a minute, you just made that money out of nothing. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even have to tell you what I'm going to say next. <laughs> okay. And we'll say, well, yeah. and we the people have done it democratically. And we the people have given value to our money because we have given a pledge. Who's backing your money? You know, what is your, is it gold or is it silver or is it sweet? Yes, exactly. <laughs> And if the bank decide to take us to court, we'll see them in our common law courts. And who will the jury be? A jury of our peers, who are probably members of the lawful bank. Now this is not difficult to come to a conclusion of. The banks are trying to say that they can create money out of nothing and charge us interest. Well, we are charged, we are making money out of nothing and we are paying them. So, mortgage pay. And of course, that is essentially <coughs> transferring the wealth of the banks back into the hands of the people. Who can argue that? The politicians might have a go, but I don't think they're going to get many voters at the next election. Okay? This will only happen when we have a critical mass of users. So we have got to take what we have all learned today. <laughs> to the next stage and talk to people about it. All right, I know you didn't get a law, but it will come to you. A number that may include one million homeowners with a mortgage. On a specified day, all homeowners with mortgages will be instructed to get this. I use the word instructed because we have got to actually get people working together. We're going to instruct them to, to use the funds in their local bank property accounts to settle their outstanding mortgage. So it's going to be a period we're going to write to the, to the existing banks and we're going to ask them to give us a settlement figure. Yeah? A settlement figure, and then on a given date, every single member of the lawful bank who's got a mortgage will pay their mortgage off. Now, can you see their faces? <laughs> Another one? Yeah, we've got 750 people this morning who've just told us they've settled. Oh, no, sorry, it's gone up to 1,000. Sorry, it's 27,000 people who've just... Oh, no, it's 250 million. Oh, my God. We'll see you in court. I don't think so. They will want to negotiate. Yeah? Now, here's an interesting thing. We will then have money <coughs> sitting in their banks, right? In their bank accounts with the lawful bank. So the Halifax lawful bank account will have potentially several million quid. And we'll say, well, you don't actually have a problem because... You can pay your staff with that money. And the reason that you should pay your staff with that money is because staff members are actually members of the lawful bank, or almost certainly to be so, because we have got a quarter of a million pounds free for them when they sign up. Yeah? And the condition of being a member of the lawful bank is that you are prepared to accept payment with our money. Yeah? That completes the circle. We can spend it, and therefore we must be able to be paid with it. Right, at that point in time when we are paying the bank's money and the banks are paying the staff money and the staff people are using the benefit of the lawful bank, the circle is closed. Yeah? It is a clear and near certainty that the, the, um, these payments will be rejected by the banks on the grounds that our money has no legitimacy, i.e. created for nothing. Uh, we will challenge this assumption 
and I think we'll be able to pay for a top-notch um, solicitors, lawyers, QCs, whatever, um, if need be. But again, as I say, the argument is that we'll see them in our courts. The issue about which courts are used themselves are being challenged because we know we have a common law right. They still have not come out and said you, that you know, common law has been oppressed, but we know it has, but this will expose them as well. The whole system exposes the whole lie, doesn't it? Because ultimately we are creating money out of nothing and, and all of a sudden the banks are saying you can't do that and we're saying well, and, well, well you've just done it. And also the common law court argument, we're, we're putting them on, on the spot. So there we are, we've got a million people signed up recently <coughs> um, and we've got 100 pounds, we've got 100 million, um, so our, our, our users are worth something, their banking system is worth nothing and it's getting um, worse by the day. Um, just to describe the process of what's really happening here is that when the banks created the liquidity and nothing from the word go, yeah, they created it all on the basis of debt. And, and the system is that they were owed the money they created and we are the debtors. We're doing exactly the same, but we're creating a positive liquidity system. And as the control passes from them to us, we are replacing a debt-based system with a positive liquidity system. So what happens is we all then have money in our bank accounts, yeah, and their bank account is empty. So that's exactly what's happening. The reason that we're setting up our own um, land registry is because what we'll also do is we'll be representing that reality in our own um, our own registry. In other words, we will not recognise their debts, but we will nevertheless have to recognise our own debts and have a registry that recognises that if you have a mortgage and you're required to pay that mortgage, all the same terms and conditions must apply. Because as I said before, if you borrow money, you must pay it back. If you don't pay money back, that's what causes the system to collapse. And that's what's happening at the moment. The system is collapsing because people can't afford to pay back with the money they borrowed, because most of the money they're paying back is actually going on interest. Yeah? So that's the distortion in the system. Right. So we need to set up lots of branches. To set up a branch, we need one person and an address. So each and every one of you can set up a branch. Yeah? That, that, that's the way the system works. But each and every one of you then must find five other people to act as a director of your branch, to manage it professionally and properly. Now once you've got six people, we want three of those people to be homeowners. That's not as a collateral or security, that's to anchor the branch in a location. Yeah? So we can say, we've got a branch on that location, we need an address, we need six directors, and that is a legitimate branch. Yeah? Okay, that's what we require. So we would like each and every one of you to consider setting up your own branch. Um, there will be a, a function to, 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 um, to carry out in running a, a branch, but it's a profit center. It's a small business, you can make money, you can earn a living having your own branch. Some branches will succeed, some branches will fail. If a branch fails, you, the branch owners, will lose out. You can spend money on a retail shop. Uh, you can, you can you know, have an elaborate building, you can do what you want, it's your branch. You can run your branch from home. A branch does not hold money, there is no money at a branch. A branch just facilitates loans. So it's a business center, it's a paperwork center. The one person needs to, to then find five others to act as directors of their branch. And whilst you're reading that, <laughs> a branch is a profit center. It is designed to be a small business to encourage people to set up branches. So, you know, if you don't have a job, if you're bored with a job, set up a branch. A family of six adults could run their own branch and not for profit. As long as they obey the rules of the branch or the old, they can actually create their own money, create their own loans, and actually go about as long as they're repaying it as well. So, so you know, you literally can have a house with six adults and have a branch. That means you don't have to pay the fees to the beneficiary. Okay. A branch earns fees for the work, it does facilitating mortgages, loans, and insurance. A branch does not hold any money, it acts merely as a facilitator. Each branch will then establish a network of retailers who will act as cash deposit and withdrawal points. The money will be secured at this level. So what you will do 
is you go around your local community and say, would you act as a branch, um, sorry, as a, as a, um, a money deposit and uh, withdrawal point. We will put a terminal in that retailer, and that terminal, you'll be able to go in with a card and zap that card and take money out of your bank account, and the retailer will fund you, give money from his till to you. Okay? So we were drawing on the resource of the retailer, his cash flow to actually provide the banking services of cash. Now, 97% of money in the, in the, in the system is, is digital, it's cards, right? We don't need money, we don't need cash, but the familiarity of cash is more of a marketing tool than anything else. Yeah, it's the feely, feely, touchy, touchy thing about money. So there's a purpose about, about using the money. There's risk attached to using money and so on and so forth. It's a completely different subject matter. But the benefit of, of money is it gets people used to the idea. If you pay £20 in, in one of our notes, people are going to say, what's this? So it's a, it's a lawful bank note. Right, explain. Right, so it's, 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 it's very much a market. We're, 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 getting, we're getting money designed at the moment. This is not one, but we're, we're sort of drawing up our own um, currency. We'll do 5, 10, and 20. And the way this, this will be as forge proof as any currency can be, you know, with the silver bits and the, the tin foil. But um, if you bring 100, or, or if you bring 20, 20 pounds to me, um, I'll replace it with this, and we will then retire that 20 pounds. So this will carry the true value of their money. So, so there's, a, there's, a, there's, a, a, there's a ploy here, and that money retired will be kept in, is out of circulation. And if anybody ever comes to our bank and says, look, I've got this, I, I don't trust it, I want a real 20 pounds, we go, sure. And we'll give it, and then we can take it out. So it's designed to imitate their money, give real value to our money using their money. And what we will then do, using the fractional reserve system as well, you've got to imagine that, that somebody's going to say, well, I've got 100 pounds here, and I'm going to put it into the bank. And what I'd like to do is I'd like to sort of try the system. We say, well, thank you very much. We'll take your 100 pounds. Any time you want, you can come and get, you know, your real money back, your so-called sterling, or you can take this and use it. No, no, I'll leave it in there. I'm, I'm going to try and use it. I'm going to try and do it. So the first thing we're going to say is, right, thank you for the 100 pounds. Now you've got a credit in your bank account of 1,000 pounds. What you should do is pay your electricity bill. Because what we've done is we've set escrow accounts for electricity, gas, water boards, and council tax. So when you get your electricity bill online, you'll be able to say, pay 50 pounds to United Utilities. And when United Utilities ring you and say you haven't paid your bill, you say, well, yes, I have actually, and I can prove it. Here's my bank statement. And they're going to say, well, you just made that money out of nothing. <laughs> <laughs> and we'll say, well, we'll see you in court if you like. A million people paying their gas bill within a month to the gas company. What are they going to do? Take us all to court? No. They'll negotiate. And the same argument applies. Your employees will accept our money because your employees will be issued with a quarter of a million pounds worth of liquidity. Yeah. It's a no-brainer, isn't it? So we control the situation because we can create the wealth for us at the expense of the bankers. So this guy's going to say, well, all right, 100 pounds, I'm going to bring the 100 pounds, and okay, well, I'll pay my bill. But what's he going to do the next time he gets 100 pounds? He's going to bring it over to our system, isn't he? In fact, he's going to work his butt off to get as much money out of their system into our system so we can get the ratio of 10 to 1. And everybody's going to be doing it, right? And they're going to be doing it quickly because the ratios are going to stop drop, dropping at a certain period of time. So get as much money, cash out of their system as you can into our system as quickly as possible because there's a benefit in doing so. Now the banks are going to say, hang on, there's someone else coming for cash. Everyone wants cash. What's going to happen? What are we causing? A run on their bank. Now, you've got one bank, everyone's running two, right, to put money in, and you've got another bank system, everybody's running away from, and it's starting to collapse. So we are driving this forward based on a critical mass of people. That's why when the people work together as a unit, we take control. Now, the interesting thing about their system is theirs is based on debt. We've got an account and we don't owe anybody. Yeah? So the power of the people is that we start to take control. 
all the wealth is transferring from their system to our system. And we got registers, land registries to prove it as well. Right, okay. Branches, of course, must account for money held by retailers, which will re represent small amounts across a large number of retailers. So, you know, potentially each little retailer will have 50 up to 100 pounds of, of the banker's money in their tills, and they are responsible for that. Um, choice of retailers is important, and insurance for cash is also possible. So, you know, we, we're looking at a situation where the, where, where the risk, the money risk, is actually spread across a lot of people. These retailers are going to love this because we've got to go into their shops to get our money out and put our money in, okay? And, and as many people are using cash these days, and they'll get the benefit of those people visiting. Uh, retailers will earn 50 pence for every deposit and withdrawal. So if you're drawing out 30 pounds, you'll pay 50p to the retailer. That's what you pay for the service, okay? That's not a lot to pay, bearing in mind that you're probably saving yourself, you know, 150,000 pounds in, in, in interest on your mortgage. This will give them an income to justify the work involved. Um, we presently have card readers, we have a system that we cards. We have a system that works right now. I can put a terminal in this room tomorrow, and I can put a terminal in Plymouth, and I can transfer from one bank account to We have that system, that's done, right? So, so the real difficult part is already done. We need branches and we need members, that's all we need. You know, how much does it cost to become a member? Nothing. What do you have to do to become a member? Go online and sign up. It could not be easier. So the control that we're all complaining about, the oppression that we're all complaining about, can be resolved when enough of us work together to create our own banking system and all we've got to do is sign our, our names. So if you're not already a member of the local bank, please sign up today or tomorrow and encourage family, friends and work colleagues. So do a little bit of homework, study a little bit more, find a, a, a bit more about it, ask questions after, after I've finished. And um, the more people that we get signed up, the faster, the faster we take control. There's two websites, so I ask everyone, please, the one thing that you can do is to go away from here. If you're not signed up to the Lawful Act, please do so. And also, it's a request, if you're not signed up as a member of the British Constitution Group, please do so. That helps me, that helps with, with, with expenses and all the rest of it, okay? The only thing is that's stopping us now is ourselves. Let's do it. Uh, well, first of all, thanks for coming up north and having a chat with us. Um, I know you like the Merlot, so I think you're very well. Uh, I'm from Leeds, and I'd like to thank everyone from Manchester who's organised this. Um, and it's just been absolutely fantastic, just being 40 miles down the motorway with you. One thing I'm concerned about, um, Roger, is this is a massive uh, social step, a massive social slow jump and everything else. We know what happened to Kennedy. Now these people are not the banking cartels, the politicians, these people are not going to give up no, easily. Yeah. They're not going to roll over. Sorry, sorry, now, we have to be concerned about people like yourselves. Well, yeah. We have to be concerned about the whole team. Okay. We've got to be concerned about them finally saying, look, this is not happening, common law is dead, you want anything else, you're going to go to End of. Now the critical factor, million people, five million people, whatever, the usual story has always been oppression, pick out the ringleaders, the rest yeah, of the world. Okay, I all right, another question. I mean, everyone asks, well, you know, when will they bump you off, Roger? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, the knowledge that I have, everyone has. It's out there, it's published there. So, so there's nothing that I know Right, that you, you potentially can't know by watching the, the, the video. So, um, the difference between me and Kennedy is that Kennedy knew the secret, right? But I don't know anything that no one else knows. It's out there, okay? So there's no point. But me off. You know that. You know that. You know. Everyone knows about it. So, so, and the other thing is that we haven't done it yet, right? So, who, are, who are the people? Who are the key people? Well, potentially everyone in this room is a key person. Because the idea that we've set up is that each net, each group of six people is an independent network. It operates autonomously. And what we're doing is we're setting up alternatives. What if the lawful bank is just one 
bank, it's just one, one concept. What happens is that we, we've talked about the We Are Change guy setting up the We Are Change bank. Yeah? There's, a, there's, a, there's a guy in Hull who likes to smoke marijuana, he wants to, he wants to set up the health bank. <laughs> <laughs> I think he's going to be the biggest bank this side of the world. The point is, the point is that so so each one of those branches becomes a, 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 an independent, autonomous uh, entity, and therefore, you know, they're going to have to bump each one of the lot, aren't they? Just can't do it. It's just impossible. But also, the tide has turned, doesn't it? You know, we we now know that the, the, the cat is out of the bag. So thanks for your concern. It's a practical thing. Yeah. Uh, right. As I say, when the ringleaders. Well, we're not ring. I mean, I'm not a ringleader. This is the point. You see, I, I, this is the truth. I have got no control of the law bank at all. Right. I've got no control of the systems at all. I control nothing. And and the thing is that all of those guys out there who who do control those those systems at the moment are linked to each other and they've got nothing to do with me. I just talk to these people and I say, can we organize that? Can we organize the other? Okay. So so they are sharing information through a network of people and one guy knows this guy but he doesn't know the friend of the other guy. So it's, it's happening out there. And what is happening with the committee of 100 is the committee of 100, that's 100 networks that, that, that feed into other networks. So it's impossible to control. The one thing that we haven't had in the British Constitution group is infiltration. And the reason is, I don't know what half of them are doing half the time. You know, we've got branches all over the place, and somebody said to me, Ian Puddick, a good friend of mine now, he said, oh, I'm, 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 um, I'm doing a speech at one of your branches next week. I said, are you? He said, well, how, how come you didn't know that? I said, I don't know what's going on. That's the whole idea. Each group is autonomous. And now what we've got is something which actually every single one of us can go out and start building without telling anybody, yeah? And all they will do is then link into a system that's, that's actually managed, hopefully by me, and if I don't get the job, someone else will get the job. And even if I, you know, if, even if I do get the job, eventually, I, I, you know, I, I need to retire soon. I'm hoping to retire in a couple of years' time. So we, we're gonna pass it over to young people. So, you know, this thing is growing and flowing on the basis of what, autonomy of individual uh, uh, branches and, 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 and regions, et cetera, et cetera. The other thing is that branches in Manchester, there'll be, two or three or five or ten branches and, and they will start to work together and they will be nominating an individual that re will represent them at the committee of 100 and that will change and flow and come and go. Um, so again, the control will be at ground level, at the branch level. And, and you know, the, the forthright individuals that want to do more will come out of the woodwork and, and, and they will start to build their areas. And, and again, you know, we, we don't, we're not nominating, we're not controlling, we're not we're not organising, we're just asking people to organise themselves, and that's happening, that's the way we will, you know, beat, beat the system. Any more questions? Roger, Roger, sorry, um, Mead said that a couple of people said um, that the local bank system is temporary, it's just a temporary setup. up um, doesn't sound like anything that you sort of said before. Um, okay, the, 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 the lawful bank network will function for as long as we want it to function. The, the purpose of, of, of setting up it as it now is, is, it, is it, can, people can understand how it works and get behind it. And then if, if, the, if the majority want to change it in any way, then, then it's up to them. So it's, it, I've set up the system as it stands at the moment because we've got to start somewhere. Yeah. So if people want to change it, um, so be it. It's not, it's not up to me. As I say, I'm just, I'm just sort of starting the ball rolling, so ultimately the majority of it's through the constitution of the system that will actually evolve. Okay. I've got two concerns that relate to that. Right? You think too much. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, the first issue in relation to that is um, the. I'm going to put it. The, just let me come back. To this, just thinking. Um, so Charles, can I? I know, Charles, I've got, Charles. I've got off on a slant and everything. Uh, all right, let's go with the first issue. The first issue is to raise alarm bells that didn't relate to that particular point. Um, you mentioned um, if, when shit hits fan, should we say, yeah. um, you've got those guys saying, hey, you're just making money out of nothing, and we're going, well, you're just making money out of nothing, and then we're loggerheads, and then we, and then they're saying, oh, you've got to come to our course, and we say, well, you've got to come to our course. And obviously you then said, oh, well, we're okay, because technically speaking, we've got ten times as, as 
come up to invest in, in best lawyers and all this sort of thing. That's when my alarm bells rang a little bit from a sovereign point of view, mm. because I'm aware that all these lawyers, all these mm -hmm. solicitors, the bar, yeah. all these barristers, the bar, everything, yeah. they, they work for the their system. Yeah, that's yeah. that's yeah. their yeah. thing. They work for the, you know, their, 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 their allegiance is to the bar, that's it's right. not yeah. to the people. Swear enough. Mm. They got yeah, exactly, that's correct. Yeah. We've got they to swore out ourselves. something yeah, that isn't for us. And, yeah. and so that brings. I want to be a lawyer. Okay. I mean, I just create. I mean, I go to court and I tell them I'm a common law advocate. Yeah. Yeah. And and the common law advocate turns around and says the common law rules are this, that, and the other. Prove it. You know. You know. So when I say our lawyers, I'm so not you're talking. So flexible with the word lawyer. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you know. Okay. Let, let, we, we, the semantics of it all is if we bog down on the detail, we'll be here for a thousand years. The bottom line is that. Yeah. We understand. I know, but semantics is how we've been tricked. It's language. Yeah, yeah. 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 So there now is a lot of barristers and all not able I mean, to a judge, judge, the the judge said to me, judge said to me, you have no right of audience in this court. And I said, yes, I do. And he said, no, you don't. Yeah. And I said, yes, I do. Right. Two different opinions here. It's pretty and plain, isn't it? Yeah. So yeah. I don't well, care what their words are. As you know, in that yeah. they currently just go. And so, so, so we are able to define things in the way we want to define them for our benefit. And look, there's more of us than there are of them. Yeah. So if we say black means green. It means green. Mm -hmm. I just remember the second question. Go on. Because <laughs> <laughs> um, you were saying, oh yeah, in a number of years, the people might decide to change it a particular way, and it's all going to be like democratically. Um, decided in this area. Now, a lot, I know a lot of people are waving the democracy flag. Uh, I'm not keen on that. I'm not particularly one of the, I don't particularly agree, yeah. because in my opinion, where the 51% can force the 49% to live in a particular way, that's not freedom. Uh, well, I can, I can answer that, because the, the whole point of the networks of groups is this, right? Is that, that, that when you have access to TAMs, right, you, you can actually use it in any way that you want within the, within the framework of how it works. So. Right. If, if you want to, if you want to lend money to your businesses in, in around the community, you can do so. If you want to fund schools, you can do so. If you want to fund, you know, airports, you can do so. You can do whatever you want, providing the community to support you. Now the point is, as long as you pay the money back, it doesn't matter what you use it for. Now what what no one's going to do is turn and say, well, actually, we're going to start charging interest because it's a fundamental part of the constitution. But interest is flawed. That's what the American Constitution has in it, doesn't it? You know, and they've, they've actually managed to over a period of time. You know, but ultimately our freedoms are about being vigilant. And we've all been fast asleep, right, we're waking up, so we need to re, re, re instigate, if you like, the principles of good government. Uh, you know how you cover up, you, you cover almost everything. You know how you talk about. Um, what do you uh, mean almost? Well, I, well I'll, tell you what, I'll tell you how almost. Okay, I'll tell you exactly how almost. Because we talk, you know, we need our own courts, we need our own bailiffs, we need our own peace officers. I agree entirely with all that, completely. But when you're talking about something that may refuse to be sort of democratically decided by the people, it sounds great, doesn't it? Give the power back to the people. It sounds great. But where an entire nation, if not world, it's been proven, because this is where we're living right now, where an entire nation can be brainwashed by a corporate-controlled media, yeah. Yeah? Then that means democracy doesn't mean shit, because all you have to do is stick the right stuff on the telly, <coughs> and they're going to do whatever it tells them no. to do. No. And that's why I'm just not a big no. fan of... We'll, no. we'll shit them then. People are waking up. <laughs> yes. People are waking up in the street. I'll tell you what. How about we get all the bad guys and we hang them all <laughs> as a lesson to the next sort of bad guys that want to have a go? Is that all right? Yeah, that's right. It's about, look, I'll settle them. It's, ultimately, it's about vigilance, isn't it? It's, it's the, the reason that we've lost control of our own lives, the reason we're on this treadmill is because we've lost vigilance. We actually lost sight of what was going on. We put it. So and there's, there's, there's so many more things that we can do, and so many more things that, that we must do, and, and I'm not gonna I'm not gonna sit down and write out all the agendas or all the things because I'm won that. I think in principle, what I'm saying to people now is this, right? If you will contact us, if you, you want to go home and, and, and you know think about it and, and decide whether or not you feel you'd like to set up a branch, I'd like to think that you know a, a good proportion of people, you know. Five, ten, six people in this room will actually say, "Yeah, I'll set up a branch." Now, once you've done that, 
go out and find five people, and we then have a legitimate branch. And I'm going to come back here, and I'm going to bring all the branches together. We're going to, you know, have further conversations so that everyone is starting to understand it better. Now, I, I know that you're going to go away and say, I can't remember a goddamn thing of what he said, and, but that's not important. The most important thing is that, A, are you prepared to, to, to get behind this and make it work? And if you are, can you get friends and families and get six people together? And then when you've done that, we will actually then educate those people. And I promise you, on the back of six people who understand this, there'll be hundreds of people that, that will join in. And that, that is the flow thing. And I can't think of, you know, I, I had one guy who said, look, no, I'm not going to sign up because I don't think it's ever going to happen. And I said, well, attitudes like yours. Yeah. <laughs> But if, every, if everyone says, yeah, look, what have we got to lose? Let's just sign up to it. You know, and the momentum will be there. People say, oh, well, there's, there's a million people signed up already. Let's go for five million, right? Listen, guys, we've just issued a quarter of a million pounds to five million people. Woo, right? Okay, let's start spending it. Our electricity bills are paid. Gas bills are paid. Our, our um, mortgages are paid. The council tax is paid. The money that we're getting of their system, we can spend on restaurants. We can spend on, on you know, holidays abroad, right? And we, we are straddling two systems, remember, because we're going to use this for our benefits, a process. And people say, you've got another holiday. How is it you've had another holiday? Well, because my gas bill of £50 a week or month cost me £5. How's that then? Lawful bank. Where, where, where is this lawful bank? It's a stampede. Yeah. It's a stampede. <laughs> the and, and the one thing, do you remember the riots last year? Right? Yeah. The people, these idiots throwing bricks through windows yeah, and all yeah. the rest of it, okay? The, the police backed down, didn't they? And why did the police back down? Numbers. They couldn't cope. Now, we, we are a peaceful organization, and we are going to use numbers to, to take back control be able to deal with it because they're not be, they won't be able to take a million people to court for goodness sake. I mean I I can I can talk for three hours in the court. I can keep this thing going a, a generation or two. <laughs> Give me the opportunity. So I promise you they will want to negotiate. And the logic of this is is this, right? If you are a large corporation, where do you borrow your money from? The banks. And how much interest do you pay? Yeah. Well why don't you borrow from us? Because it's going to be better for you, albeit that you know large corporations are not something I'm going to be supporting greatly. I think we need to break those down. That's another subject for another day. One question. Okay, you just, I mean, if you just brought another question for a moment, but there are likely to be other groups doing similar things. And I'm thinking if you set an example by doing this, aren't the large corporations who have assets going to set this up for themselves? Aren't they going to ignore this system? Right, so you're saying large corporations will set up their own interest-free mortgages? Well, they'll set up their own, they'll set up their own <laughs> banking system based on, what, on the assets. It's got that now. Yeah. It's it's got got it's I mean, it's right? I mean, it's, it, 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 it's self-defeating. I mean, I'm not going to oppose them. Ultimately, I can see that, that the banks are going to start saying, well, maybe we should start copying what they're doing here. I mean, look, what we're suggesting is that ultimately the old system is going to die and the new system is going to take over. And if, if somebody has a better means of, of marketing this than, than, than we have, then it may be that a new system will evolve from that. But I have to warn you that we do know that there are already a number of organizations out there that are actually promote, promoting the same sort of interest free philosophies. And ultimately, their objective is that they're going to put control in the hands of a group of people. Yeah. Right. So I'm saying them as long as what they're suggesting is actually in the hands of the people at the ground level, then go for it. Yeah. That's the ultimate ultimate uh, thing that you've got to look at. Who's going to be in charge? Is it going to be from the top down or is it from the bottom up? And as you've seen on this demonstration, this is controlled by every single one in this room through a network of six people who all influence who actually represents them at the committee of 100, and that committee of 100 decides who runs the bank, and the bank itself is run according to the constitution that's actually voted for by the people, okay? So it's from the bottom up. And as I say, I have a mind for the job, so if you see my name on the list, remember to vote for me. Okay, guys, right. I'll have to call that time on that one.